week ago. For the latest, let's go to the Fox News room. Bill, the headline tonight is U.S. officials say it appears more likely that whatever happened to this plane was a result of human intervention, some sort of air piracy. Now, are they sure? They're not. But there are a lot of facts that have come together today from American officials that lead them to believe that. Let me show you. First of all, this is the spot where it first lost contact, right, where the transponders went out. Then late this afternoon, the New York Times began reporting that it's now believed the plane went up to 45,000 feet. That's close to a mile higher than it should have been. Then went back down to 23,000 feet, two miles below where it should be cruising. And instead of just flying on a straight path, made these zigzags here. That's not a pre-planned flight. That's not from anything that they did in a cockpit. That's manual flying, according to American officials. So we know the area where they're searching, but they really think that it's over to the west and somewhere in the Indian Ocean. Here's what Catherine Harridge is reporting today. You know how your cell phone, you go through a tunnel or something, it loses contact, and then you come on the other side and the circle goes round and round and it says finally that it made contact with Verizon or AT&T or whatever? The plane was sending out the exact same sort of thing. The plane was sending out a ping once every hour, as it's supposed to do, and that ping doesn't send any official data, anything specific, not how high I am or how low I am, but it says I am. In other words, I'm still flying, and it did for some four to five hours. At some point, according to the reporting, the pinging stopped. Why? Well, it either crashed or somebody turned it off once it landed. And that is something that they're exploring as Fox reports live tonight. So what do we have? We have a mystery with a plane that was flying at erratic levels, according to the reporting of the New York Times. And according to Catherine Harridge, was still sending out information that it was in the sky. But nothing specific except for what we got from the ground radar. Still lots to learn, but everything we found out today makes much more sense, Bill. As you guys may know, we don't do much speculation here on The Factor, but other news agencies do. Guessing about, guessing about what may have happened, wasting your time. Last night, an hour, one hour on another network of nothing. It was amazing. So tonight, we're going to stick with the facts. Joining us now from Washington, Scott Brenner, former FAA official. So what do we know for sure as, for we, sure. Go into, as we go into the weekend? Mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're going after a week. What do we know for sure happened? Well, for sure what we know is Malaysian Airlines took off on time for a, you know, a normal route up to Beijing, got about 40 minutes out, checked in with air traffic control, signed off with the traditional way of saying, you know, Malaysia flight 370, checking in, good night. Air traffic control says good night. Sometime shortly thereafter, Somebody aboard the, that aircraft turns off that transponder. Transponder, again, is the technology that identifies that aircraft's name, altitude, speed for air traffic control. A few minutes after that, somebody turns off another communication system, which provides data on how that aircraft is functioning to their maintenance facility. From there, we understand, according to some satellite data we've been able to pull down, is that that aircraft flew for another four to five hours in some direction. Other than that, we have no idea what has happened to this aircraft. Now, in order to disable a transponder in the other gizmo, you would have to be a pilot or, or somebody very familiar with the airline, right? You'd have to know how to do that. The transponder is fairly 